Hi, I'm Dr. Leslie Gray, and welcome to Customer Appreciation Week. This is the week leading up to our big Customer Appreciation Night, which is our once a year event where we get to celebrate you, our amazing patients, and have you help us celebrate our anniversary. And this year we are celebrating 24 years. If you've never been, the event is so much fun. We have tons of raffle prizes and room prizes and treats and all kinds of good things. So we hope you can make it. It is Wednesday, October 16th from 4.30 to 7.30, but make sure you RSVP. It's always a packed event and it's a ton of fun. If you can't make the event, that's okay. You um, All week, this week pre preceding the event, we have our big pre-sale. So during the event, you can save 20% off of gift certificates and off of our products, but we allow you to do that as well during our pre-sale week. So you can uh, um, access the pre-sale online or through our website. Uh, you're also free to stop by and save 20% off the gift certificates. You can use them all year and again, off of products. In addition, um, for October, we always uh, want to celebrate Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And last year, we started doing our Pretty in Pink raffle basket, and it is back. The basket's fantastic. It's, uh, I think, over about $2,000 worth of fun little goodies. And the raffle tickets are just $5. If you buy five, you get one free. It goes to a great cause. So I encourage you to uh, purchase your raffle tickets as well. So. Let's dive into today's subject. We're going to be talking about something new and different each week. Today's subject is something near and dear to my heart. We're going to be talking about fillers and Botox. Um, I want to give you some just general information about these, um, both of these procedures. Some people kind of want to know um, how they differ, so we'll get you that information. And then we're also going to lead into some patient perspectives where you get to hear from some of our patients and get their insights into uh, the procedures as well. You'll kind of know how they initially decided to do the procedure, um, some of their fears and hesitations, and then how they felt about the procedure afterwards as well. So it's lots of good information coming up. I'm glad you're here. So let's dive in. I want to start talking, I think, about Botox because that's probably the thing that people will think about a lot of times first. And it is, uh, Botox is, you know, I think it has a little bit of a reputation sometimes of making people look frozen um, or um, not natural, but that's not how we approach it here. In fact, we won several awards for best natural looking Botox because we really go by the philosophy here that less is more. Um, I should kind of explain to you a little bit first about how Botox works and then explain to you how we approach treating someone um, for the first time. So Botox's only job, only function, is to temporarily relax a muscle, and that's all it does. So sometimes people will do Botox because they want to make their lines disappear. And they think if they do the Botox, when it kicks in, the, the wrinkle will go away. So for instance, if we're treating 11s, they think the 11 line should go if you have um, if they have the creases, but that's not really how it works. It, it can help prevent those from getting deeper. It can prevent, prevent those from forming if you know you're headed in that direction by looking at your mom or your grandma. But really what it's going to do is kind of help prevent you from you activating these three muscles, which make a frown. And so when we treat you with Botox, we check you back in two to four weeks. I'm gonna talk about the frown just because it's the most common area that we start with. But when we check people back, we ask them to frown. And typically at that two to four week window, your Botox is really kicked in. And if I say frown, people will say I am frowning. I'm like, okay, it's working. Um, and then we look at the rest of it. So for instance, we'll have you raise your eyebrows, we'll have you smile and make sure that the Botox makes sense. At that point, if we need to touch them, some things up, maybe there's too much activity in the forehead. Um, maybe you wanna treat your crow's feet at that point will add to it slowly because I think it's really important not to be over Botoxed and you know everybody wears their Botox differently and if we start very low and slow with you and build you a Botox what we call it Botox recipe that's very unique to you you will be able to be very secure that you know this works for me we know this treatment works and you can use that recipe for years which is really nice Eventually you can outgrow it um, and we adjust it as we go. But again, we wanna make sure that you're wearing the Botox 
um, where it does look natural. It looks good for you. It feels good for you. And we talk through a lot of like what your expectations are during our consults. Consults for any aesthetic procedure are so important and you really want to make sure you're getting good information and also um, with a provider that really is listening to your concerns because sometimes what bothers you um, may not be the first thing you really actually need to approach and you want someone that's going to be honest enough with you to kind of tell you, hey, I see what you're talking about, but maybe this is the direction we need to be going in. Um, and there's a lot of ways that we can approach frustration. So Botox is one. So um, again, Botox typically frown, crow's feet, forehead is where we think about it. We can use it in some other areas as well, but really to know best where it would suit you, the consult's going to be the key because we really want to be able to kind of look at you, look at your uh, face at rest and in motion because remember Botox is controlling the muscle and we want to make sure that you're a good candidate because not everybody is. So again, consults are key. Moving on to fillers. A lot of times um, patients will ask me, what's the difference between Botox and fillers? Well, as we des just discussed, the Botox's job is to temporarily relax the muscle. The filler's job is to fill. So, um, and actually fillers have evolved over time. I've been doing this for well, 25 plus years now, a long time, but really when I first started doing it, fillers were just line fillers. So if you had a line, we would fill the line and you'd go away. So typically it was these lines that might've been these etchy lines. Um, and that's really all we could do with fillers. And when the line went, came back, you just come back for treatment. Now, we are able, fillers have evolved. So over 25 years, we have different products. We have um, ones that can address different issues. And again, when you're trying to do fillers in a way that is very conservative and very natural looking, you want to address not just say the line or the one thing that maybe you're seeing, but you kind of want to think, go back a little bit, take a step back and go, why is that there to begin with? And a lot of times, the things that frustrate people most commonly, which are um, a lot of times the under eye area, the, the lip area, this area, the jowls, a lot of that stems for what I think of as structure or framework um, problems, volume issues in the structure and framework area of the face, which is kind of in the periphery. And by creating lift there, you can really help a lot of different areas. And it's a lot of fun, it's really gratifying, and it's, um, the way, again, the way we treat is a very low and slow approach. So most patients are like us, they're very conservative, so typically patients will start with a syringe of filler, um, sometimes two, but typically, again, just one, dip your toe in. And as long as you're coming in two to three times a year, you can make forward pro progress because each filler session should be a building block or a stepping stone to the next. And that way you are setting the pace of change that you're most comfortable with. And it's always a discussion with us. All of our fillers that we use are hyaluronic acid base, which I love because that's in your skin naturally. You lose it as you age, so you're replacing like with like. You can also get a little bit of collagen building with repeated treatments and you could take it out. So if you want the emergency escape hatch because you're nervous about things, we have that for you. There's an enzyme that is naturally in our body called hyaluronidase that also comes in a nice jar conveniently and you can safely dissolve filler. So that's nice as well. Um, so fillers, again, done in a very conservative manner will create usually more lift. People fear fillers because of width. So we've all seen those cheeks or those lips or something that looks really false and off. And that honestly takes a lot of filler um, to get to that point. Our approach, again, doing it in a very conservative, stepwise manner, we're not gonna, we'll make sure, we will make sure you stay out of trouble with that. That is not our aesthetic and um, we wanna make sure, we wanna keep you looking good. We wanna make it, a procedure that makes you feel more confident about yourself. I'm really not worried about what anyone else is doing. I want you to be happy. And that's kind of how our approach is with filler. So with both Botox and filler, um, again, consults are key because whatever your frustrations are, we wanna make sure that this is the right procedure for you. We um, try and give you several options as well if we can, as far as, um, you know, sometimes 
fillers may not be the thing that you need. Maybe your frustration is more textural, and then we'll talk a little bit about lasers. But whatever it is, again, at the consult, we can really assess you and evaluate what's going on. Now let's move on to some patient perspectives. This will be, uh, this is the first year we're doing it, but I think it's um, a great way for some of you out there who are thinking about doing these procedures to get someone else's, a patient's point of view. How did they initially decide to do their procedure? What were their fears or hesitations or concerns? Uh, what did they hope to achieve? Um, you'll hear about that. Also, you'll hear about what the treatments were like and how they felt after the procedure. So I hope you enjoy these patient perspectives. I did the consultation with Dr. Gray. Mm -hmm. um, and we did, I think we started with the filler and I'm not sure if we start with Botox right away, but I've always kind of been like, Hey, I know I'm my expertise and I know like I know she's great at what she does, so I often defer to her for recommendations and you know. I mean always the I'm like the the face kind of melting kind of feel, like the dragging here. Fair. Um, I think after yeah, I was the gym I was working at posted pictures and I think that's what prompted me. There was a picture of me and I was like I just felt like I was I could see it, like with this kind of like dragging thing. I was like, all right, I really need to motivate and talk to somebody, so I came in and did the consultation with her. So like I've had friends who've done, you know, other routes and I've always recommended, you know, for me finding a professional and a doctor and MD that you do it um, because, you know, as a woman of a certain age and, you know, it's your face and I've always wanted to be very um, specific, I guess, and intentional about choosing somebody. I mean, because it is an, an investment. So I felt very comfortable with Dr. Gray and I love her attention to detail. approaching now I met her probably early in the fourth floor and I'm, I'm knocking on the door of the fifth floor so I've always kind of said that I want to try to just kind of tread water like my aesthetic is not to look to look different necessarily but I've always just kind of wanted to maintain and hold steady a little bit um, and I always think about it because I was thinking the other day like that whole term for fashion like quiet luxury like I just kind of wanted like you know, went to a reunion once with my college friends and they were like, kind of like, didn't know. They were kind of like, you look great, what are you doing for your skin? And they were never like, oh, she must be getting filler and this or that. Like, they were like, oh, I would never have guessed. Like, but they were just kind of like, oh, you look good. Like, ballasted. And like, that was like, that's what I'm looking for. So I remember telling Dr. Gray, be like, I think it was the biggest compliment. I was like, I wanted to make sure I told you that because it made me feel good. But I was also like, that's what I'm looking for. Like. You know, the Botox now I joke because I'm like, I do still do the numbing cream, but I'm like, oh, that's nothing, right? Because I'm like, this is the easy one. The filler with the, I guess it's the cannula or yeah. the thicker needle, it feels different, but I think it's almost, it's not the pain as much as it just kind of feels a little funky, you know? But now that I've gotten used to it, the more every time I'm like, that's not nearly as bad as I always anticipated it's going to be. Yeah. Um, and then, I, as I said, I do the numbing, so I don't feel any pain. And I, like, even that night, there's some maybe when it wears off you feel a little bit uncomfortable but nothing that takes me out of doing what I need to do for the day the next by the next day it's like totally back to normal I'm working out and doing all the kind of things um and when I immediately leave the office we look in the mirror I'm like oh I can see that I know she sees it as she puts it in but then there's often like I feel like a week or two later I look I'm like oh like I have that, that look about the mirror I'm like all right you're holding on you're doing okay like you know kind of feeling so yeah. I think sometimes it almost like settles in for at least for me when I'm like a, a week or two later I come oh Mm -hmm. Right? <laughs> Absolutely, I have. I mean, I've sent any of my friends too that have started, and again, like in various locations or whatever else, and I said, well, you should, you know, my recommendation is always to go to somebody within the medical field and do a full consultation because like, I went in, I think, I think initially, remember, I was, yeah, I was like, oh, I just want to fill in here. I don't know what I'm talking about. Dr. Tracy, well, that's not you know what you do right there and from her expertise right they feel here whatever else to address this but as a lay person i'm like i just kind of fill in these right flatten them out and i think sometimes when you go to other environments you can be like hey i want botox here here and here and they'll just do it and um, what i value a lot about dr grace yeah she looks and i love i always joke my friend like you up down up down up down she's so meticulous and looking with every little drop and she knows where to, like, I would never thought of that to get chin filler, right? But she's like, you got to balance it out in the symmetric. And I'm like, that's where I think um, 
for talent comes in and why I have recommended to friends who have kind of started to venture into that is like, that would be my recommendation to find somebody like Dr. Gray. I mean, I, I again, continually surprised. I'm like, it's not that bad at all, right? And then the, that's very easy. And I mean, I think also my experience here, I felt very safe and comfortable. This, it's not, and again, other environments, I imagine there's, it feels like there's more of a monetary benefit or a motivation sometimes to making recommendations. I've never felt like Dr. Gray's ever tried to, would ever recommend anything beyond what I need and need my aesthetics. So I always feel very comfortable working within my budget. Um, to meet my goals as well, which I, makes me feel very comfortable. Okay. Like I realized after taking some pictures, mm -hmm. I had the deep 11. And then that was my introduce, introduction to Botox. And it was miraculous. I remember coming home like, wow. So then I wasn't frightened of it. And then I encouraged other people to do it, some friends. So they've done it. Um, but that was the beginning of doing things. Filler started, I guess, maybe quite a few years later. Mm -hmm. I think like I have thin lips, so we did a little bit of lips, a little bit, because um, I think my, my face can hang a little bit, so just light filler. But again, I always just ask Dr. Gray at her discretion, do what she thinks I need to do, and she calls it, I'm coming in for a freshening up. Mm -hmm. And I always look really fresh after, so I love it. And I'm never really bruised, there's no downtime. I'm always nervous when I come in, and then I leave saying, why was I nervous? Because I'm never disappointed. Well, I, you don't want any, like, you hear horror stories that you come out looking different. And I don't think I ever look different. I look fresher. And that's what my whole goal is. I never want to look not like myself. Yeah, no, so just trying to stay youthful and age gracefully. But I'm not going to go crazy eventually Time's going to catch up, and I don't want a young face on an old body, so it's got to somehow match. Yeah. So, yeah. Like, sometimes I look in the mirror and I'm ready, I'm red, with, but within less than an hour, I look good, um, and I go home, and I'm like, oh, wow, that wasn't so bad. And I really, like... I go, can go out afterwards, which is amazing. No, in fact, I did, it was last week on, I think Thursday night, I did it, and saw friends on Saturday, and I don't think anybody really noticed. Um, within three to four days, it depends. I'm a good scheduler, so I usually schedule right when I'm leaving, so I do it usually every three months. Sometimes there's a little bit of a gap there, um, but not usually. So I don't let it get too bad. If I let it go four months, it's heavier. It takes a little bit longer to kick in. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, like two to three days. She'll do the top of my eyes, a little bit here and here. So it pulls up my brow. Botox for sure. It's easy, no downtime. That is hands down like the best thing I ever did. I just think you have to be careful who you go to. I go to Dr. Gray because she keeps it natural and I don't look different. So I would say yes and go to Dr. Gray. <laughs> I think as the um, products have gotten better too, because I've been doing it for a while, you know, again, Botox probably for, I was thinking about it, um, the age of my daughter, so she's 23, so probably when she was about four or five, so I've been doing about 18 years, the Botox, filler probably about 14 years. I think earlier, maybe I bruised more, or things are just different, but now I, that's what I'm saying, I never really bruise, but maybe it's Dr. Gray, you know, and I do know that if you do get a bruise, you can come in for a little laser yeah. and then it takes it away. Cause I did that only once though. Thank you so much for joining us for the Botox and filler se uh, session for Customer Appreciation Week. I want to thank our patients who uh, generously provided their perspectives, and I hope that was helpful to you. Uh, as always, if you have any questions, we are always here for you and available to answer your questions. I do want to remind you that our Customer Appreciation Sale is going on now. Uh, save 20% off of our products and gift certificates. Um, and also don't forget to enter the Pretty in Pink raffle drawing where you can win the grand prize, which is over $2,000 worth of 
lots of fun goodies. Um, five dollars for a ticket, buy five, get one free. And also, uh, don't forget if you want to join us for a live event on October 16th at 4.30, from 4.30 to 7.30, please RSVP. And finally, I want to invite you to enter our raffle for today. The grand prize, uh, there's actually two grand prizes, a free area of Botox and a free syringe of filler. To enter to win, click the link in the description box under this video. There's a short form and you will be entered. It's as easy as that. I wanna thank you again for 24 amazing years and thank you for joining us for this video and we hope to see you on Customer Appreciation Night. Thanks, bye.